Hiya, Smirk here. Steam has badges, and I like making badges for games I like. Sometimes, those badges give me coupons for games. And sometimes, those coupons bring me somewhere interesting. And today, I'm here to share where one took me. Today's game is called The Princess Adventure. It was developed and self-published by Falcon Dev. It was released on November 8th of 2018 and normally costs 6 US dollars. The game doesn't have enough ratings for a store rating, but after checking out the 8 total ratings we have, there's 2 positive and 6 negative, leaving this game with a 25% recommendation rating. In Falcon Dev's first and only published game, you play as a silent, nameless princess in a war-torn nation whose main economic tool seems to be that it's an Amazon fulfillment center. I mean, the entire first level of the game revolves around boxes and box-based puzzles. Look at how much care she puts in when she throws those boxes, it's, it's just like an Amazon delivery driver. Anyway, another nation sends a prince to achieve peace between the two nations. Not sure exactly how, they don't really get to that part. Are they negotiating peace terms? Are they engaging in trade routes? Are they about to bump uglies? Well, nonetheless, the peace talks are interrupted when a witch, who's eager for revenge towards the prince's nation, kidnaps him amidst their discussion. Not wanting to seem sus, the princess is suggested to by the guards to go alone to rescue him, fearing that their full mobilization efforts will intimidate the prince's nation, whom hasn't yet realized their prince has gone missing. If you're kind of scratching your head, thinking it's a bit odd that the prince came alone, you're not entirely wrong to do so. Apparently the prince just like, outran his entourage? I'm just thinking that the prince looked at his head guard and said, Smell you later, Gramps! And then the Green Hill Zone song started playing as he Naruto ran off into the distance. The prince's adventure is first and foremost a 2D platformer. The gameplay at its core is holding the right arrow key, swinging your sword, throwing your knives, and jumping around. The game does feature some controller compatibility, which worked for me mostly, it's just that the options menu isn't controller compatible. You'll travel through a couple of different realms, each with their own prominent environmental obstacle, and each realm will be wrapped up with a boss. The game is on the shorter side, I was able to beat it in 2.7 hours, although I have no achievements to reflect that. No, I'm not bitter. I probably could have done it faster, I'm thinking somewhere around 2 hours, but we'll get to that later. Well, that's kind of all I need to do to set the stage, so let's talk about what I liked. The game's visual art, particularly its environmental art, is its strongest asset, but most things look great. I did run into this one lad who didn't have his head connected to his body, but everyone else seemed to have their life sorted out. The cave level is a little more drab than its counterparts, but it's a cave, so I guess I'm not sure how much depth I should be expecting. Also, the swamp biome randomly features these saws. Could anybody here guess why there are saw blades just floating around in the swamp biome? It's never explained, but I'd love to hear your world-appropriate justification as to why they're here. Also, some of the saws weren't attached to the railings, but those are, those are probably just details, I suppose. Trailing that, the music was largely okay. The level songs are all fitting and distinguishable from one another. EXCEPT FOR ONE! The bosses at the end of each realm share the same boss song, and I unfortunately think the boss song is the most unfitting song in the game's soundtrack. You see, or hear, there's this melodic bell or chime sound that sort of plays against the dangerous nature of the encounter. It just seems a little too light-hearted. There was also this level in the game where the music was doubled, so that was kind of a weird experience to play through. This is getting out of hand. That's about everything I'm willing to praise, so let's move on to the things that I liked a little less. To start off with the lesser of the evils, I'll start with the bugs. I ran into two game-breaking bugs, one reproducible, but avoidable, and then one that just randomly came up near the end. So it's really easy to do what I call a down smash, where the princess stabs the sword into the ground wall in mid-air. There was this one specific part of the game where I'd do it to kill an enemy, and it just caused the princess to get stuck, and no button would get her unstuck, forcing me to restart. Oh my god, I'm stuck! I did this a couple of times and it reproduced itself just about every time in the same spot, and it made me not want to down smash at later points in the game for fear of losing progress. Then for the other, sometime near the end of the game, the game just randomly closed. What? The game just f***ing randomly closed. God f***ing damn it. 
It's not a big deal since I saved at every opportunity, but still inconvenient. Next up, I really didn't like how speech in the game was conducted. The game is all text-based and you can't change the scroll speed. You can press a button to post the text of the bubble in full, but some of the speech bubbles are misconfigured to where if you press it twice, say for example during the initial print speech, arguably the most important lines of dialogue in the game, it just fast forwards the whole storyline conversation between you, the prince, the witch, and the guards. Oh my fucking god, just pressing it twice at all skips the whole goddamn I fucking hate how fucking dialogue is fucking done in this game. I f I ended up restarting the game 3 times thinking either my controller was broken or that I was doing something wrong, but no. You can't fast forward any parts of this conversation without skipping the whole cutscene. Also, I didn't really enjoy the silent protagonist in this instance. There are even some characters that hear a response from her, but you don't see any indication of it, so it felt like a disconnecting way to see your character respond. Then lastly, the story overall is just bland. There's a lack of details to really bring the world to life, and there's just so many but whys that leave a void that never get filled. Also, what the hell does load these boxes mean? Lastly, I had several rough run-ins with the gameplay. I'll start at the smaller end of things, which is that the game features limited lives. When you lose all your hearts, you lose a life. You gain lives for every 25 coins you collect, but when you run out of lives, you can just reload the game, so I don't really know what the point of lives are in the first place since they don't relate to achievements or any additional content. It's not like dying with a life spawns you in a different space as opposed to a recovered save. Next is about how you take damage. When you get hit, you get knocked backwards based on the direction of your character and you don't get invincibility frames. This can lead to a certain death that looks like this. I lost all six hearts in less than a second I couldn't do anything about it! Moving on, I'll talk about boss fights. So there's four in total and the only one I found challenging was the first one. If for some reason you don't want to see the examples, you can skip to the next non-spoiler subject via the timestamp that's on your screen now. Alright, carrying on. The middle two were incredibly simple. Oh, it's a fucking moderately large skeleton. Actually, he's not even that big. Oh, he's a floating head. He's invisible? Okay, I'm blocked by an invisible wall? Okay, what the fuck? This was the easiest boss of all- And the last one wasn't any more challenging than the first. I simply just stood alongside the middle two bosses and hit them until they died. Sort of like a wet noodle fight. Also, it's either a lack of creativity or an abundance of laziness to see that the boss arena for those two bosses is just locked out with invisible walls. Okay, and now for the worst defender of them all, and I couldn't figure out if this was a bug or if it was gameplay related, but I felt it was closer to the latter. So there are some parts near the end of the game that require some pretty precise button pressing since you can jump off of walls and there's no ground below you. There was this one section where my inputs didn't seem to register. I was so convinced that the game was failing to accept my inputs, I propped up an input checker on my OBS client and I felt pretty reassured that for one reason or another, the game just wasn't accepting my input and I couldn't figure out why. It was the biggest point of contention in my gameplay experience. No, f you video game! As a couple of honorable but lesser demons, I didn't think I could pick up the boxes, so I was trying to move them with my body, which required a lot of patience for this puzzle, and then I accidentally picked up a box, and my life became so much better. It was at that moment I realized what the game meant earlier by, you can load these boxes. And then for the other, after getting to a certain part in the game, you run into this character who rewards your progress with the ability to jump off walls. Mind you, I had this ability since the tutorial level, albeit I discovered it by accident, so not sure exactly what that was about. Anywho, that's everything, so let's move on to the summary and score. Alrighty, to recall things I enjoyed most about this game, I enjoyed the environmental art the most, most of it is well designed, the shading is excellent, and the distinction between the foreground and the backdrops and all of its accessories are pleasant and cohesive. Then lastly, I thought most of the music in the game was nice and fitting. EXCEPT ONE! For the things I enjoyed a little less, the game had at least one game-breaking bug and a crash that I experienced. 
Following that, speech was implemented poorly with no regards to scroll speed, and the storytelling was pretty bland and missing a lot of details. And the game can't seem to decide if the protagonist is silent or not since it seems like she responds without your knowledge. Then lastly, the gameplay has plenty of rough patches due to the dearth of deliberate designs, such as the lack of purpose for the limited life system, or the absence of recovery or protection tools when taking damage. There's also the experience that three quarters of the boss fights in the game aren't difficult, and then the failed recognition of inputs that led to being the cause of multiple deaths. Every other gameplay element was so distracting, I almost forgot to remind myself that the achievements are broken. To score this game, I'd give it a 4 out of 10. The game is playable through some very painful and frustrating endeavors, but ultimately it fails to provide an enjoyably holistic experience. Since The Princess Adventure is Falcon Dev's first game, I think it's a good demonstration of developing skills, but considering that it's a $6 game for this kind of gameplay, it's an unjustifiable purchase for me. Alrighty, well, that just about does it. Like the video if you liked the video, comment your thoughts, and subscribe if you want to see some of my future content. Feel free to slap that bell's thick ass if you want to receive notifications for future videos. Oh my fucking god.